I'm Anthony McCarron from the Daily News. Andy Pettit has decided to call it a career after 16 seasons, 13 of them in pinstripes, and the Yankees are going to suffer this year because of his retirement. Their rotation is thin and pretty much downright unreliable beyond CeCe Sabathia and Phil Hughes, and some of their highly touted youngsters are not ready for the major leagues yet. You think the Yankees are comfy with Ivan Nova and Sergio Mitre as two-fifths of their starting rotation? I don't but they'll have to muddle through while perhaps looking to deal for another starter before the July 31st trade deadline. Now, for several years, Pettit has talked about how it's an annual decision to pitch or to quit, and it's clear his heart is no longer in it if he is quitting after his fine 2010 season. Pettit was worried that he was missing too much at home in Houston with his kids growing up quickly and playing sports of his own. So now he leaves behind the legacy of a great Yankee, and likely one day will have a plaque in Monument Park. Pettit is in the top five of several important pitching categories in Yankee history, including wins and strikeouts and games started, and should be considered one of the finest Yankee hurlers ever. He'll even get Hall of Fame consideration, though some voters may penalize him for his admitted use of human growth hormone, a mere three all-star selections, and just one major award, the 2001 ALCS MVP. Still, Pettit has a compelling case for Cooperstown, considering that he's the winningest pitcher in postseason history with 19 victories, has more wins than Whitey Ford, 240 to 236, though Ford did have more in pinstripes. And he retires with an excellent 635 winning percentage, better than all-time greats Greg Maddox, Carl Hubble, and Bob Feller. Good luck in retirement, Andy. The Yankees sure are going to miss you.